saying how do I keep my Ibanez Wah and DS2 under control because when I use them the volume jumps sky high um, and when you do it doesn't how what's what's the deal there and some people have said they followed my instructions and it's still doing the same thing so I thought what I'll do today is just dedicate this entire video to basically talking about the Ibanez Wah and the DS2 and every in and out of how I use it to make sure like you know the volume doesn't go sky high so um the main thing with the Ibanez Wah and the DS2 is not to give them a clean signal. Otherwise, you will get a volume jump. If, if, it's, if it's too clean or it is just a clean channel, the Ibanez Wah and the DS2 will not work. It will set. It will do that volume jump thing. So if you're like playing like. Um, and then you go to turn your wah pedal, it will do that horrible. It just jumps out and I'm not playing anymore, that's horrible. So, you yeah, know, I jumped up a lot then, that was a big boost. And then the same thing with DS2, it's all kind of... You know, it's, it's all of a sudden, ah, it's way too loud and unusable and it's dead harsh as well. So, uh, I have said this in quite a few videos, but as I said, the key to these pedals is they don't want to be seeing a perfectly clean signal like that. <laughs> It might, especially if you have to be John for shanty thing, it might sound right. You know, but it's not, it's not, it's not the right kind of tone for the DS2 and the Ibanez while to live in. So, there's a couple of things I feel you need to do to be able to make these things behave. Number one is either using your amp or a pedal is getting an overdriven signal. Using either the amp or a pedal to compress the signal with, the, you know, with, with distortion and gain, but not to the point where it's it's like this. You know, not to a point where it's massively distorted. It wants to be just a little bit, you know, a little bit dirty, but not horrendously like you know over the top distortion. And uh, if you've seen my video on the jackhammer, and you know, and I've I've got other videos on this as well. But as I, I thought I'd dedicate this video solely to this. Um, I use the jackhammer more than I use the amp just because I prefer the sound. Uh, it's a little bit smoother and a little bit more punchy with the jackhammer instead of using the amp, uh, either the MG or the CR120. We're going through the CR120 today, everybody. Um, but that's one of the main components is you need that overdrive sound. You need it to be, you know, slightly... <laughs> to be slightly gritty and, 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 and kind of overdriven. Um, so that's kind of the main point. The other main point I would say is pick up height. This is one thing I am actually I've kind of failed to mention and that's my own fault. But um, this is one thing that I, I've got to say is if your amp is too overdriven or you know that you can't get the right kind of amount of gain, lower your pickups. I always have my pickups in my strats super low. The neck pickup uh, is always pretty much flush with the scratch plate. Uh, the middle pickups a little bit higher, but not a great deal. It's maybe about a, mi a millimeter on the bass and treble side up from the scratch plate, like a millimeter. It's very small. 
And then the bridge pickup is slightly higher because you want to get a bit more kind of bite out of the bridge pickup. And I have the the base side on the bridge on the on the base uh, no, sorry the bridge pickup about a millimeter well 1.5 millimeters like a millimeter and a half on the base side and then on about two millimeters on the treble side. So it just gives it a little bit more you know a little bit more bite so to say. And the same when you go to the neck pickup it's a lot cleaner. You know it gives you a bit more of a cleaner sound. So say having an overdrive sound and your pickups low. It will, it will, it will make your guitar cleaner and make the signal. You, you'll have to overdrive it more to get any kind of grit out of it. Ergo, like you know, your your boost the compression, so to say. And I don't know if this is the way. I'm, I'm well, I I kind of do know this is the way that John Shanty had his got his sound because if you look at the pictures that Dave Rat took of his Silver Jubilee and his Marshall Major. The Marshall Major, I mean, the volumes are like this. Uh, the, the high treble's on four, and the, 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 the normal channel's on like seven or eight. Well, about seven. And then if you look at the Silver Jubilee, the Super, Silver Jubilee's maxed out. So those amps will be overdriving naturally because they're valve. They'll be have that natural valve overdri overdriven sound. They'll be very kind of like, they'll sound clean, but they're not clean. And I feel that's where kind of like, this is kind of going a bit of a bit of astray with with John Fashanti's tone, especially is and especially with some of like you know comments from um, from Dave Lee. Like uh, if you read some of the Dave Lee, Dave Lee recommends you got like a Mesa Boogie and just use the clean channel. It's like well, that's never gonna work. That is never gonna work. A Mesa Boogie is way too clean for John's tone. It, it, it and it's too bright and it's too kind of like American sounding when you need more like, British kind of martially grunt. Um, so that will never work. And I'm you know I'm not. I'm trying to put Dave uh, Lee down or anything like that, but I do feel some of the things he said aren't factual, and he's leading us on a bit of a dance. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to say anything too much about that. But some of the things he said, like I, like like the pickups that John used, it, it, it just it's just not. I mean, it doesn't doesn't it doesn't add up. It just feels a bit fishy to me. But anyway, back to the thing. Uh, I'm waffling. Um, so yeah, pickup height is a big thing to get that kind of sound, because you need them low so you can overdrive things more and then increase that compression. So, like I said before, this is so this is without the jackhammer giving me that compression. So this is just the clean amp, uh, the C120, uh, and I'll stick on the Ibanez Wah, and you'll hear it go mental. You know, it jumps, but if I kick on the jackhammer, off again so you can hear that the jackhammer is compressing the signal it's getting rid of all the nasty highs and the and the lows and just making like the waveform of the wh10 behave itself it's keeping it like you know squished and making it behave and with that you can kind of get your <laughs> you get it to behave and, and react in the way that uh, John's wah wah pedal does. Um, another thing about the Jackhammer and the Ibanez wah, which I'll talk about quickly, is is um, my Ibanez wah isn't uh, modded. Sorry everyone, I've got a really itchy nose. Uh, my Ibanez wah isn't modded, it, it's totally stock, uh, and I use um, the pedal power to power it. I don't run off batteries, uh, mainly because the power battery power thing broke off and I don't know where it went. So I'm, I'm running it just off the uh, off a off a nine volt power supply. It's not battery powered, um, but it's not modded. But it does the same thing that everybody else is out there does. If you plug it into an amp straight, it just sucks all the tone out of the amp, and you you just left with this horrible kind of like kind of sound where it sounds absolutely rubbish and it's unusable. The wah sounds great when you use it, but your bypass signal is diabolically bad. Um, and the way around that one, I think I've spoken about this before as well, but is to have an overdriven signal. If you give it an overdriven signal, um, it behaves itself more. Uh, I think I've demonstrated that in a video so it's, it's, it's somewhere. But um, but what basically, because it's got an overdriven signal, it just kind of tends to give it back its give you back your natural tone. If you're using either your overdrive on your amp or a pedal, excuse me. It will give it back to you. So, like I say, instead of just being kind of like that, you clean tone it. You know, regardless of it, of it of it being in the signal or not. So that's the Ibanez Wah. That's that's 
the way that behaves, it just needs that kind of natural overdriven compression that John would get from his amps and you know from his from his uh, Boss Chorus pedal. Um, but like I say, with his Silver Jubilee crank, that amp is not clean. And there is a reason why when John's doing Imit Remus and stuff like that, and when he wants feedback, he goes and stands in front of a Jubilee, because the Jubilee, Jubilee will be giving him a lot more gain and a lot more distortion and a lot more of that kind of warm warm kind of sound to the, uh, the Major, which will be a lot cleaner-ish. It won't be clean. Anybody who's crank, cranked up a marsh, an old Marshall and, and put the volumes where they are, it's not a clean sound. It's, it's very articulate and clean, but it's a distorted tone nonetheless. And if you listen to Hyde Park, John's tone isn't clean at all at Hyde Park. Um, so, so that's, yeah, that, that's the reason the Ibanez Wah works on my board, not being modded, and I can use it just as is. And I don't have to do anything to it. The only thing I've done is, is another mod, but that, that's, it's not electrical. It's just actually putting one of the rubber feet under the switch so it's a bit harder to turn on. Because as we know, the version 2 is very easy to turn on. But anyway, so that's the WH-10. And again, reacts better if your pickups are low. And especially if you've got single coils, it doesn't... The WH-10 is okay with humbuckers, but it definitely prefers single coils. And especially if you have that John thing, it works better. So again, the Ibanez Wah, it needs that driven signal. And if you've got a driven signal, you can use it without having to worry about modding it. It will just behave itself and it will do what it's supposed to do. And um, you know, do that awesome. <laughs> you know, do that really cool John Fashanti Wah Wah thing. Same goes for the DS2. Um, you can get the DS2 to sound great without um, any compression. Um, but what, what you can do is, well, it, I set my DS2 with everything maxed out, so uh, level, tone and distortion is on 10 and it's set to mode 2. Uh, but, the, the pro but the problem with that is, I say, when you go to turn it on, uh, if you've got like a clean sound, it just jumps and sounds horrible and really harsh. You can, if you put the, uh, put the level down, and uh, if you leave the distortion all the way up, knock the tone all the way down, and then roll in the, the level, you know, you can get it to sound really nice. clean the signal and that's just like you know there's no volume drum there because I've lowered the volume but the Ibanez Wah won't react in that crazy John Shanty way because the tone's all the way down on the pedal so you'll get this if you turn the wah pull on you know, it doesn't doesn't work it doesn't work um, even though the Ibanez Wah, uh, even though the DS2 sounds really cool. You know, it's it's not going to behave itself. So, um, again, you need that kind of overdriven thing just to, to make the, the DS2 behave. So if I knock the DS2 back up now to everything on full whack, kick on the jackhammer, um, which is a bit like... It kind of goes amp, jackhammer, WH-10, DS-2, and then uh, guitar. It will now behave itself, still sound really nice like it did before, but I'll get the DS-2 to uh, the uh, Ibanez Wah to work. You know, and I can get that crazy wah wah Danny California sound. Um, and again, that's because I'm compressing the signal. And the DS2 is a very kind of transparent sound when it's already over, when, when the amp's already kind of like that, a kind of overdriven, kind of cleanish kind of sound. It's a very, very transparent kind of um, tone you get out of the guitar, um, out of the pedal, sorry. It, it basically just takes on the sound, but fatter. <laughs> fatter it, it, and, that, and I think that's when you can mistake things where John uses for a fuzz when he's actually just using the DS2 you know I don't, I don't 
doubt that John was using maybe the fuzz in that, and I know he used the fuzz quite a lot during the Californication era, but I feel sometimes it's mainly kind of... A, but the DS2 has always been his go-to pedal, so you know, it is, it's a core of the, one of his sounds. But again, it's behaving itself because of that compression that's added by the jackhammer. And again, you can do this with the um, amp on the, on the dirty channel, but again, uh, if your amp has too much gain in it, if it's too much of a high gain amp, then you won't be able to, you want to get like a, you can use a clean channel and an overdrive pedal like the Marshall Jackhammer to simulate that kind of thing and just push the, uh, the amp basically, just into that kind of compression where the two will behave. But again, the most, uh, one of the most important points is to have your pickups low. If you look at John's pickups, they're super low. His 55 isn't low, but his 62 is. So lower your pickups, uh, and see if that helps as well, because I get I, I get I get so many comments like you know, all the time saying like you know I can't get the DS2 and the Ibanez while to work. What what do I do with this and the other? So you know, hence this video. But um, but that that is they're they're the key points. They are literally the key points. If you have like an overdrive, that's just kind of like you know smoothing out the sound and giving you a little bit of drive, not so it's like you know fully saturated, just like, you know, just gives you a little bit of grit, just to give you that, uh, you know, just give you that kind of like, barky kind of cleanish tone. The Ibanez Watt and the DS2 will behave. They will totally behave, like, regardless of what you do, but they'll never jump. You know, there's, there's no volume jump there at all, they're just, because the compression is so great, it, you're just adding. You, you, you know, it's not going to go above, it's not going to go below. It's just going to sit right in that um, area where the the jackhammer has has put your tone, basically. You know, they they can't go outside of that. They're like in, they were imprisoned by it, so to say. So um, so that's the kind of key thing. Another thing I want to talk about quickly um, was people saying, "Oh, the DS2 is really noisy. What do I, you know, what do I do?" You know, is that normal and this that, and the other? Yeah, it's totally no it, totally normal for it to be hiss hissy or noisy because it, it's just that kind of pedal. Uh, I mean, if you lower your distortion, you know, to about half, it will go away. You know, and it it shuts up. But if you run it flat out like I like to do, it, it tends to hiss. So it's one of those pedals that when you need it, you turn it on. As soon as you're done with it, turn it off, unless you want to get feedback and do, you know, it's kind of really cool kind of... Um... feedback other than that you want to turn it off as soon as you're done with it because it, it is a noisy pedal it, it hisses and if you add more even more gain it even you know it's even more hissy so it is totally normal for ds2 if you're going to run it max out to be really noisy and aggressive uh don't worry about it just say just you know get used to turning it off and on when it as and when needed so to say and uh if you, if you don't want that just load distortion to about half and you know it, it still it still does its thing and I'm pretty sure John during the Californication era ran the DS2 with the distortion quite low and uh, then used the uh, the boss fuzz to kind of um, add to that to make it even more saturated kind of thing but it's all about compression at the end of the day and it's kind of like that compression you get from gain <clears throat> You hear people like Phil X talking about it and stuff like that. It's like if you've got a really distorted signal, no matter what you add to it, it'll never get louder. It'll just add more gain because you, it, it just isn't possible. Uh, simply because of a co the compression that you've got, the distortion adds. It just makes everything really smooth and uniform. Whereas if you've got a clean, a clean signal that's got no compression on it whatsoever, uh, the the waveforms of your pedals, the sound of your pedals, are just allowed to go wherever the hell they want. You know, they can just go, oh, come here, I'm dead loud, or oh, come here, I'm really quiet. You know, they're allowed to do whatever they want. So it all comes down to that, and you can get it from the amp, and you can get it from a pedal. I prefer it from a pedal, because 
it, I don't know, it does sound... It, like I say, it does sound smoother to me and a little bit warmer. And Amp's got... Uh, uh, but again, that's, that's my ear. It's a little, uh, John's tone is a little bit more aggressive than kind of what I, I would say I have. Mine's a little bit darker, maybe. But um, I, if I'm running straight into like, the Seattle 20 or, or, or the MG... It's a bit more of an aggressive kind of like tone, and um, but you can still make them behave. And like I said, I've got a million videos where, you know, I was just using um, just an amp and the amp's dirty channel and the Ivan Iswar and the DS2, uh, and it, you know they still behave themselves. You know, and you still get that really cool kind of like John Shanty kind of tone. T tone. You get that. You get that tone, everybody. Yeah, you know, it's a great tone. I don't know why I became partial all of a sudden, but anyway, let's move along, shall we? But yeah. It's all to do with that and pickup height. Like I say, the lower the pickups are in your guitar, the less output you'll have, and the more you'll have to compensate by overdriving. And it'll never fully overdrive because your pickups are so low and so far from the string that you can't get, you'll, you'll get that sound. Which is super clean, but like I say, if you had like the, the, the jack hammer on top and just kind of crank the volume and then crank again a little bit on that pedal, it just boosts it back up. And the same thing, same goes with an amp. If you, you know, if you lower your pickups, the gain dial, like you know, if you have your pickups high, the gain dial on free might give you a lot of distortion. But if you sink your pickups really low to nearly where they're flush with the scratch plate, as soon as you do that, the gain dial at free will be super clean. You know, it'll, it'll all of a sudden, like you know, all that distortion will just go, and um, you'll just get like a nice kind of like a compressed kind of cleanish sound, and you might be able to crank it up even more. Um, I normally, if I'm going straight into the CL120 uh, with the uh, WH10 and the DS2, I normally run the gain on about three, or three and a half maybe, um, and the uh, the MG is on three. So, um, so yeah, and and the reason, like, if I if I do that with a guitar that's got higher pickups or, or humbuckers, it, it's very distorted. But because my pickups are so low, I say it just it's just super super clean. So that's the reason I can kind of get away with it, and that's the reason why my album is why my DS2 sound the way they do. It's, it's because of the compression given to me by either my amp or the jackhammer or the golden plexi on my other board. So, and that's the reason. Um, I, I mean, I, I hear all the time like you, you peop, uh, people out there are like really struggling to do it, and you know, hence, hence this video. I thought I'd just natter a bit about it and just try and like you know see if I can kind of help you along the way a bit more and um you know hopefully maybe i've said something that i've missed in the past and you know it might might get, might help you out a little bit more than that so that's the key but what i would say is try both if you kind of like you know a, a marshall jackhammer you can pick up second hand dirt cheap and a, and a, and a tone city golden plexi dirt cheap and to me they're the best kind of john fashanti esque kind of pedals to kind of like you know to boost your signal to that kind of like you know a john s kind of tone um you know, I'd prefer them to using an, a, 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 an amp uh, distortion because, and also mainly because some gigs that I do, it's backline supplied, and sometimes, excuse me, you might get a Fender amp, and with no breakup. And if you're reliant on your amp for breakup and you don't have a pedal to simulate that, then um, you know you're in trouble because if your main sound is your DS2 and you're turning to a gig where your amp is that clean. <laughs> have to do kind of a lot of tweaking to get it to, to behave itself whereas if you have your overdrive pedal on the board it doesn't matter what you plug into as long as you kind of go into like a, a, a dirty channel or even a clean channel you know you can get it to behave itself so it, you know it, it'll it'll do what it does so that's another reason why i prefer using a, an overdrive pedal instead of just using the amp is i don't i like to use the amp as just like a clean platform just to kind of like layer things on top but again you know, if you can drag your amps everywhere, then you can use your dirty channel. There's, there's no problem with that, but make sure it is the dirty channel. Don't ever use a clean channel. The Ivan is what, and the DS2 will rebel, and they'll come at you with knives and daggers and massacre you. Because um, they're, just, they're just brutal pedals um, without that overdrive and that compression. So, um, so yeah, I think I've waffled on enough about this. Um... Is there anything else I've, I've failed to mention? Uh, Pickups, compression, overdrive. Like I say, just experiment with your dirty channel of your amp. 
and if you're if you're using a pedal experiment on the clean channel and if that doesn't work go to your gain channel and run the gain super low you know anywhere below five or four depending on the amp will you know you'll, you'll find a way um my blues breaker uh mg uh i have to run the gain at breakthrough on the on od1 i have to have it so if like you know that's zero that's off and that's one it has to be in the middle it has to be like 0 0.5 to for the for the gain to work other than that if i put it on two which is where i normally run it on my other mgs uh it's too distorted and it, it's too gained up whereas if i run it on that 0 0.5 that's where it lies so don't be afraid to turn the gain down super low and crank up the master on your amp you know to get that sound you know that's that's why I always run the Dirty Channel's volume on 4 watt. I want the most out of it I can get. Um, another reason why I love 100 watt amps is because I don't use a lot of gain. They're very, they run very, very quiet. I mean, that's that's two on the CL120. I can pretty much talk over that. But when I, you know, crank on the the uh, the jackhammer, you know, you can probably hear me a bit, but. So I'm basically just kind of like using the amp as uh, a clean thing and using the, the, the jackhammer for the, the overdrive and compression. Compressor pedals won't work. Uh, trust me, I've tried it. I've got a really cool compressor pedal, which I'm going to do a demo of. Uh, but they don't work. They don't, they don't give you the right kind of sound. And certain overdrives won't work. Ibanez Tube Screamers, Boss Overdrives, um, what else is there? Marshall kind of Blues Breaker pedals. They don't work. Marshall Governor doesn't work. Um, quite a lot of pedals don't like the Ibanez Watt and the DS2, so they're, they're very picky. They're very picky pedals, and it's taken me years to find pedals that the DS2 and the make the Ibanez Watt and the DS2 behave and give you a nice, warm, kind of but aggressive John Frusciante tone. It's taken me years to find the Jackhammer and the Golden Plexi, and I really do think those two pedals you just can't go wrong. I just think they are, they just nail it, they absolutely nail it. And you know, they're so cheap, it's just, you know, it's just, because of that, it just makes them even more perfect. So, um, so yeah, like I say, I think I've waffled on enough now. Um, like I say, go for an overdrive pedal, also try the dirty channel your amp, um, lower your pickups, and just experiment and just just play with it for a while and just see what you can kind of get till they till, until they kind of like instead of kind of going instead of doing that they just you know it, it just becomes a nice kind of fast so, uh, i hope this has cleared some stuff up anyway i mean i i, I know it's a kind of a lot a lot of talking and, and and kind of waffling on in this video so i do apologize for that but i really kind of like because i get so many questions about that, 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 that tone and why is my album is why am I DS2 doing this I thought I'd dedicate a video to it and li really just kind of like like waffle you know and, and really just kind of like anything that comes to mind that I think might help I'm just going to say it and uh, I can't think of anything else so uh, so that is it ladies and gentlemen so I do hope you enjoyed this video I hope it kind of like you know might help you out uh, in some way and um, you know if you, if you know anybody who's having trouble with it you know uh, please, you know, feel free to forward them to this video uh, if, if you want, you know. Um, and yeah, just, just like I say, just, just play around. Just play around with your dirty channel. If your dirty channel doesn't do it, go to an overdrive pedal because one or the other will work for you. Um, just to let you know, uh, like I say, I always, if I'm using my CR120 to get the John sound and make the Ibanez Wire and the DS2 behave, I normally run it with, on the dirty channel, with volume on 10. Uh, I have treble off. I normally have mids around three, two or three, depending. And I have bass about three or four. And I have gain between three and four. But it's sometimes, it depends how I feel. If I'm a bit more distorted, I'll lean more towards four. But I never quite get to four. It's just shy of four. But most of the time, it's around three and a half. Um, that's kind of like where I find it. And again, with low pickups, you know, it's a very clean-ish kind of sound but it still gives you that kind of grunt and the compression. So that's where I run it on the CL120. Marshall MG, I use OD1 on the Dirty Channel and I run the gain at three and I have bass, middle, treble and contour all on zero and volume all the way up on the on the channel. So uh, mass, the channel volume's all the way up on 10, all the EQ is set to zero and I have the gain about three. And um, that normally, well, and if it's a little bit too thin sometimes, depending on, 
something weird atmospheric conditions or room I'm in I'll boost the bass but I won't touch the mid treble or contour I'll only mess with the bass dial and I'll never use the clean channel I don't use clean channels amps really at all uh, it's very very rare that I use a clean channel on an amp uh, unless I'm kind of use, doing it for a, a demo or, 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 or a specific kind of sound. I'm pretty much normally most of the time using a dirty channel on an amplifier. I don't really like clean channels. Um, the best clean channel I have ever heard is the clean channel on the Vox VR, the Valve Reactor AC30, because once you crank the volume on it, it does distort it and just give you the John Frusciante tone. And I was just like, why don't more amps do this? You know, it was amazing. So, I mean, you could argue that, you know, with the CR120, you could, like, you know, boost your pickups really high, and that'll, uh, and, and with the Marshall, it'll break up the clean sound. Yeah, it will, but it won't give you the right tone. It won't work, because the clean channel, even when it's overdriven, is still not going to, it doesn't have the compression. It needs to be an overdrive slash distortion to make them behave. So, uh, so yeah, I'm still waffling. I don't even know how long this video is. It's supposed to be like five minutes, but I don't know how long we are. Anyway, uh, like I said, I really hope uh, this has been informative. I hope it helps you out. Um, if it doesn't, you're more than welcome to come around and tell me. It didn't help, Dave. Thanks very much. And then, uh, you know, I'll cry in a corner forever. No, uh, but uh, but yeah, I really do hope this helps you out. Um, if you've got any more questions, uh, write them in the comment section below and I'll, I'll reply to you um, as soon as I can. And, uh, you know, if, I, if I've missed something out or you're experiencing something I haven't spoke about, um, just leave it in the comment section below and I'll, I'll reply to you as soon as I can get around to it. But, um, but, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again. Have a great weekend, everybody. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you on Monday for another video. So, um, yes, goodbye now. <coughs>